Growing up in California, I didn't exactly know what Mormons were. I honestly at one point in my life thought they were a Utah-based basketball team. However, later in life when I moved to the state of Idaho, I discovered that they were in fact not a basketball team, but a large organized religion with temples and everything. I often go thrifting when I look for video games. It can be very rewarding to find games at a low price versus the eBay prices. So where I live, I make a large circuit hitting several different thrift shops in my area. Savers, Goodwill, Idaho Youth Ranch, Vets for Success, St. Vincent's, and something called Deseret Industries. I discovered that Deseret Industries is in fact the Mormon-owned thrift stores. And when I go there, it sometimes reveals really unique finds. A while back, while browsing the PC section of Deseret Industries, I found something called Halem, a stripling warrior's quest. The game at first glance is relatively unassuming. However, the game has a gigantic sticker on the front that reads, the first major Book of Mormon video game. Now, I found this game too interesting to pass up. It turns out the game was produced by the Excel Entertainment Group, which is a LDS company, or a Latter-day Saints company, that's more widely associated with creating Christian songs. The game was made by React Games, a company that is more widely known for making iPad and mobile device games. And this will explain a lot about the game's basic controls. For those unfamiliar with the Mormon faith, the game tells the story of ancient Jewish tribes battling for survival in early America. And by early America, I mean pre-European encounter, and even before the Vikings found North America. So allow me to prefix this as actual Mormon belief when it comes to dealing with Native Americans and their history. So if you're not Mormon, the game will seem more like a really interesting fantasy story. The game starts out with a lot of Peruvian pan flute. I'm talking downtown San Francisco level of pan flute. That or the really high-end mini mall level of pan flute. Either way, you're in for a lot of pan flute. There's a bit of a backstory explaining the conflicts occurring in the story. After the exposition, you awaken in a cave where you're met by a woman, who explains who you are and what you need to do to get back to the village. In order to do that, you have to battle giant insects and solve basic moving puzzles by shifting around planks and boards. The game's pathing leaves a bit to be desired, considering your character can clip on almost everything, from plants to people. Just stand around even when their synagogue's on fire. Yeah, you know, there's more than one bucket, they could certainly help. And yes, that structure is a synagogue, according to the game. I was genuinely confused as to what the word was for a minute when they said it was on fire. So let me add that the game, despite being released in 2011, has zero voice acting. But don't worry, they make up for that lack of voices with pan flute. What stands out the most to me about this game is that technically it exists within the reality of the Book of Mormon. And so what surprised me is that there were glowing rocks within the caves, which I thought would be a contradiction. But I discovered that within the Book of Mormon, there were in fact glowing rocks, which were given to the Jewish people to help them see with inside a gigantic sealed barge which allowed them to get to the Mesoamerica for the first time, but this is just the third time if you look at the stories within the Book of Mormon. But I'm not sure because I'm not a Mormon nor am I a biblical scholar. Because to be honest, whenever I see glowing rocks, I always think of phasers from Star Trek. But back to the game, when you leave the cave and you start basically helping the village fix its problems and putting out the fire in the synagogue, that begins the number of mind-numbing tasks you have to undertake in this game. And that also includes getting a shovel from someone and digging up dirt mounds and then moving water around. But the entire game is like that. Even the combat is relatively mind-numbing. I would struggle to call this game an RPG in any sense of the word, considering every combat battle is broken down to an almost rocks, paper, scissors mechanic where you have attack, defend, and charge. Where charge allows you to do a little more damage when you attack, it's almost pointless considering you do almost as much damage without charging. I'm gonna be honest with you, I haven't finished the game. And that's because it has save points. And that makes the game that much less bearable. That's right, a game made in 2011, and for the PC no less, has save points. The game still retails for about $24 if you try to buy it directly from the Halem Game website which, oddly enough, will link you to the Deseret Book website. Lucky for me, on the other hand, I got my copy for about $3. And I think that's about how much it should be worth. But if you're the kind of person who enjoys collecting Christian games, this one would definitely make a fantastic discussion piece for your collection. But thank you for listening or watching. Hope you have a fantastic day or evening. Mm -hmm.